Hello everyone, uh, it's November the 17th on Wednesday. Uh, sorry we're a little late getting going here and everything. We've been a lot of different places, uh, you know, around the state, you know, doing stuff where winning schools had, uh, had won a, a wonderful prize and everything on the amount of vac vaccination percentage rate that they had at those schools. We went to Pratt Elementary, we went to uh, 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 Hurricane High School, and then we went to, uh, I think, Wright Sanders or, or Saunders, you know, in Cabell County, and we just, uh, so we got a little bit behind there, and I, and I apologize for that, but uh, uh, we have 62 additional deaths since uh, Monday, and a bunch of them are reconciliations, but nevertheless, gosh, dog, it's just, it's just a ton of West Virginians, that's all there is to it, and uh, and, and so I'm going to read through those. Please keep them in your, in your prayers in every way. And, and uh, I, I just truly believe in my heart we're making a lot of progress and everything, but at the same time, this is anything but progress when you got to, to look at the reflection of all these great West Virginians and what they've given us all. So please remember them. Please, please remember them. The 4,637th death of 94-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 4,638th death of 74-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 4,639th death of 77-year-old female from Lincoln County. The 4,640th death of 64-year-old female from Lincoln County. The 4,641st death of 78-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 4,642nd death an 86-year-old male from Summers County. The 4,643rd death of 20, mm, good gracious. Mm, 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 mm. The 4,643rd death of 21-year-old male from Wyoming County. The 4,644th death of 89-year-old male from Ritchie County. The 4,645th death of 63-year-old male from Preston County. The 4,646th death of 74-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 4,647th death of 63-year-old female from Nicholas County. The 4,648th death of 68-year-old male from Randolph County. The 4,649th death of 43-year-old male from Barber County. The 4,650th death of 86-year-old male from Barber County. The 4,651st death of 74-year-old female from Marshall County. The 4,652nd death of 71-year-old male from Harrison County. The 4,653rd death of 48-year-old female from Wayne County. The 4,654th death of 54-year-old female from Upshur County. The 4,655th death of 62-year-old female from Ohio County. The 4,656th death, an 85-year-old female from Wayne County. The 4,657th death, a 56-year-old female from Webster County. The 4,658th death, an 89-year-old male from Harrison County. The 4,659th death, a 68-year-old male from McDowell County. The 4,660th death, a 68-year-old female from Braxton County. The 4,661st death, death, an 86-year-old female from Fayette County. The 4,662nd death, a 61-year-old female from Mason County. The 4,663rd death, a 59-year-old female from Work County. The 4,664th death, a 60, an 84-year-old female from Ohio County. The 4,665th death, an 81-year-old female from Wood County. The 4,666th death, a 78-year-old male from Webster County. The 4,667th death, a 63-year-old female from Nicholas County. The 4,668th death, a 79-year-old male from Monongahela County. The 4,669th death, a 78-year-old female from Grant County. The 4,670th death, an 81-year-old male from Fayette County. The 4,671st death, a 74-year-old male from Preston County. The 4,672nd death, a 37-year-old female from Wetzel County. The 4,673rd death, a 51-year-old male from Wetzel County. 
the 4,674th death of 64-year-old female from Wayne County, the 4,675th death of 65-year-old female from Kanawha County, the 4,676th death of an 84-year-old female from Mingo County, the 4,677th death of an 89-year-old male from Putnam County, the 4,678th death of a 49-year-old male from Randolph County, the 4,679th death of a 92-year-old male from Barber County, the 4,680th death is a 52-year-old male from Lincoln County, the 4,681st death of a 92-year-old female from Greenbrier County, the 4,682nd death of a 62-year-old male from Hancock County, the 4,683rd death of a 77-year-old male from Kanawha County, the 4,684th death is a 63-year-old male from Monongahela County, the 4,685th death is a 70-year-old male from Brook County. The 4,686th death is a 69-year-old female from Marion County. The 4,687th death is a 75-year-old male from Taylor County. The 4,688th death is a 70-year-old female from Clay County. The 4,689th death is a 48-year-old male from Harrison County. The 4,690th death is a 73-year-old male from Marion County. The 4,691st death is a 64-year-old male from Wood County. The 4,692nd death is a 90-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 4,693rd death is a 34-year-old female from Mason County. The 4,694th death is a 79-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 4,695th death, a 94-year-old female from Marion County. The 4,696th death, a 75-year-old male from Summers County. The 4,697th death, a 68-year-old female from Hampshire County. And the 4,698th death in West Virginia is a 73-year-old male from Preston County. Now, let me tell you this. Before I, I go any further, I... I want you to know just this. When I look down there and I see that we've lost a 21-year-old in Wyoming County, you know, just the other day, it seems like in my life, I was a 21-year-old in Wyoming County. My grandparents lived at Copperston. My other set of grandparents lived on Huff Mountain. And, uh, and to think the life that I've lived since 21 is unbelievable. And that young kid is gone. And a 30-year-old or a 34-year-old is gone. And the other thing I want you to know is just this. Today, in going to the different places and different schools, I had a lady come up to me, and I'm not going to tell you the correct number, but she said, uh, she was talking about, and I'm not even going to tell you, you know, a brother, a husband, whomever, but she was talking to me about a really, really, really close loved one that we lost. Someone that I knew. And you know what she said? She said, they were number, and I remember the number and I won't forget the number, but it's not my place to call the number. But they were number XXXX. Now just think, that meant an awful lot to that lady and that family that I took the time as your governor should take the time to recognize that death and recognize the number of that death. And truly, truly, we should honor every single last one of these people. I ask you to do that, please. With 6,462 active cases, with 970 new positive cases, our daily positivity rate is at 7.80. We've tested a lot, evidently. Cumulative is now each inched up from 6.15 to 6.16. 6 
Recovered cases are 273,975. We have, we have dropped to almost half the number of people that are hospitalized today as they were at the peak. The peak was 1,012, and today we're at 519. We have 171 people in the ICU units and 91 on ventilators. We have 72% of our people that are hospitalized, and I'll talk to you just about that, that are hospitalized that are unvaccinated. That means that 28% of the people that are hospitalized today are vaccinated. Before, well, I might as well address it right now. I was on Hoppy today, Metro News and everything, and we went into detail on how you can get your booster shots. At least now, some way, somehow, through the robocall and all the different stuff that we've been doing, lo and behold, we're getting an absolute capacity plus some on our call lines and on the DHH, our website and everything of people calling in, wanting to get their booster shot. A lot of them, you know, just never understood that they could get their booster shot 18 and above and all the different reasons from, from individual issues to, to obesity, to using tobacco, to using, you know, to all the different things. You know, you, you work in an office, you work around individuals, you can get your booster shot. And you need absolutely to call and get it right now. Because what's happening is those people that don't have their booster shots are ending, ending up in the hospital and we're losing some of them because the booster is only, is only working because everything else has worn off. Your immune system from the standpoint of the vaccine that you have had, if you're fully vaccinated and out six months on Pfizer and Moderna, is for all practical purposes worn off. From J&J, &J, if you're two months out, it's worn off. You've got to go get that booster shot. With six green counties, we have 29 school outbreaks in 17 counties, 435 confirmed cases. I remind you over and over about the free testing and take advantage of it. And if you have any symptoms at all, especially if you're 50 and older, 65 and older, the antibodies will save your life if we can catch it soon enough. Think about really hard about wearing a face covering. If you're compromised with health issues in any way, if you go into a crowd of people that you don't really know, especially indoors. Now, just get this. I want to read this to you. You can get your booster shot 18 and above if you are an individual that is living in what you think is a high risk area, or if you work in an office or an outdoor job like a deep mine, whatever it may be, if you use tobacco, if you're overweight, if you've got high blood pressure, I mean, for crying out loud, if you've got anything, anything at all, you can get your booster shot. You know, I would say if you're breathing, you can get your booster shot. And I would highly encourage you to go do so. The FDA and the CDC will change immediately. I really believe they will be changing very, very, very soon to where everybody, they'll come out and say, everybody can get their booster shot. What are you waiting on? What in the world are you waiting on? You've got to get your booster shot now. You lost your card, called DHHR. The age eligibility five and older. Uh, I encourage all of our parents and, and grandparents to help me with the young kids. All the info stuff on the vaccine stuff is online. You, all the free testing's up. I always want to thank Fruth and Walgreens for all that they've done. We've got 46 outbreaks. Uh, we've got two outbreaks in our church communities now in Nicholas, and we've added Webster County. We've got to watch that. There's a total cases of 15 in those two counties. We've got to watch this. 
Church communities, you've done fantastic. Tighten up. Just tighten up just a little bit. From the standpoint of our inmates, 64 and 22 staff, you can get your flu shot right with your COVID vaccine. I've told you over and over, if you're a renter or a landlord, take advantage of these dollars for crying out loud. Just call us and see if you could qualify. And if you can, we may very well be able to get some dollars in your pocket. The grand families, this will go offline on December the 15th. You can get $150 school voucher. Now ages over five, five and older. Like I said, on Monday, we went to the Mountaineer Montessori in Charleston, and we went to Charleston Catholic High School. It was fantastic. I mean, that's all there is to it. Tuesday, yesterday, early in the morning, we went over to Mercer Elementary, and uh, I guess that, that was the, the first one was at Charleston Catholic, and this is at uh, Mercer Elementary. And today we were at P Pratt Elementary first thing this morning. And uh, there we are at Pratt. And then we left there and we went to Hurricane High School. And there we are right with, at Hurricane High School and just a great, great, great setting and everything. And then we left there and we went to Height Saunders elementary school and this was this place was wild and uh, but it's really 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 good and all three of those schools were the winners of the fifty thousand dollar award you know that was really coming from the department of education and clayton birch we thank him and all of his folks for the idea and everything is great stuff now on do it for baby dog round three we're going to have to make a couple little twists and everything the the prize giveaways you know will be announced this friday you know the uh the thanksgiving holidays and the deer season and everything that's going on has got we got to adjust just a little bit here you know as far as the winning school you know we know who the winning school is for this week but what we're going to have to do is hold it and skip across next week as well. And we will go to two of the winning schools the very next week with their party and their awards and all that. The, uh, from the standpoint of all the 25 prizes of the ten, of the $10,000 educational savings account, or savings fund winners and the hundred lifetime hunting and fishing licenses and all that, all that will be announced on Friday, but we will not announce the school on Friday. And we will do that. We will we will we'll, we'll do that the week after this the, the the Thanksgiving week coming up. You know, on the scheduling, I'm gonna, I, I'm going to try this. If if really and truly we have any concerns or any reason not to do this, I'm going to I'm going to absolutely some way somehow put together enough people to be able to pull it off. But we got a lot of folks that are going on vacation next week. We'll have the briefing on Friday. And then we'll skip until Wednesday, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and we will only have one briefing the week of Thanksgiving week. Now, like I said, if we have any concerns whatsoever, and there's anything that comes up that we've got to call people from wherever they may be and call them in here to be able to do this and do additional briefings, we'll do it. But, uh, but next week, we're going to one day, and that's on Wednesday. We will have this br the briefing this Friday. But next week, the only day we will do it is on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, as far as unemployment numbers, you know, I wish we had Scott Atkins on with us and everything because he could talk, but I, but, uh, but I appreciate him and I appreciate everything that he's doing. Uh, but the, the, the brass tax facts is it's not Scott, it's not the governor, it's not, it's us. It's what we're doing in West Virginia right now. The unemployment, we have set a new, the second all-time state record. West Virginia's seasonally adjusted unemployment rate has dropped three more tenths of a percentage point to 4.3% in October, the lowest seasonally adjusted unemployment rate for the state on record. Now just think about it. This broke, I mean, we broke we broke that, the record last month. Here we go again in another direction, breaking again this month. 
we have decreased our unemployment rate 18 consecutive months, 18 consecutive months through this COVID situation and everything. You know, West Virginia, I've said it over and over and over. You know, we have now broken the all-time state record for our non-seasonably adjusted unemployment rate for the second straight month. It's amazing. It's amazing what's going on in West Virginia. You know, we've made West Virginia more business friendly. We've stood up for our energy sector and, and been proud of who we are in a lot of ways there. We've made historic investments in tourism and broadband, and we've revamped our whole transportation system. Let me tell you this, when I, yesterday, because I hadn't been through this road for a long, long, long time. And I just did it, you know, just to see what, what was really, what it was like. This road, the last time I'd been through it was all flat to pieces. That's all there is to it. It's a road that crosses across Herndon Mountain. Now it's a road that's got lots of twists and turns and slip potentials and everything else. But heaven to Betsy. That road is in flawless condition. It is all flat, brand new. Guardrails everywhere new. Absolutely, the slips have been re repaired and concrete walls. The pavement is absolutely perfect. And it, it is the same all over the place. You see a lot of orange cones out there. And we absolutely tell you, please watch our workers. Please slow down and watch our workers. But with all that, I would just say, you know, we have really, really made an impact and we're continuing to do just that. And we're going to continue to do that. We opened, we just opened Route 35 from the standpoint of the, the roads to prosperity dollars that we committed there and everything to finish it, finish it. 53 years it was in the, in the works and we finished it. You know, we've all absolutely pulled the rope together through this terrible pandemic and, uh, you know, through through really the right decisions from lots and lots of folks, the right decisions were made, the right buttons were pushed, and we're off and going. I say it all, all the time, but West Virginia, you're killing it right now, but there's still plenty, plenty to do. And we want to just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. You know, um, the last thing I've got, is really important because this goes back to our military and our first responders. But Kathy and I are inviting all West Virginians to honor the members of our military and our first responders by submitting photos to be showcased on the two recognition trees that will be displayed right at the Capitol in the upcoming holiday season. These recognition trees will be located in the West Rotunda of the main Capitol building in Charleston, along with a third tree that's decorated by our Gold Star mothers and our Gold Star families. And absolutely, they will honor those that have been lost also. All the information about sending the photos is up there on our website. And please take advantage. Please take advantage. You know, uh, I say it, and I, you know, it sounds like old hat. But it's not old hat to me. You know, really, when it really boils right down to it, we just celebrated Veterans Day, and we seem to just go on, do we not? You owe every single thing you have in life, every single thing you have in life, to the people that have participated in our military, our veterans, the active military, our first responders, all those great heroes that we've, that we've relied on in this terrible pan pandemic, you owe everything you have. This business of defund the police and everything, it makes me throw up. That's all there is to it. These people are our heroes. They're our superstars beyond belief and you should love them and you should respect them and you should show your appreciation. Thank you so much. That's all I got right now. All right. Thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Well, good afternoon. I want to limit my comments to reinforce what the governor has suggested. We know that 
more people than we've seen before uh, in West Virginia hospitals have undergone their first two vaccinations with Pfizer and Moderna or their single vaccination with Johnson and Johnson and now need to get a booster. We know that the number of deaths that we have uh, have fallen and weighed most heavily on our older population. West Virginians that are 50 and older have accounted for 97% uh, of our deaths. And we know in our vaccine breakthrough data that West Virginians who have been vaccinated with those first two vaccines uh, for Pfizer and Moderna or that single vaccine for Johnson & Johnson who are dying are all over, virtually all over 50 years old. So we cannot implore and ask any West Virginian who's gotten two vaccines with Pfizer and Moderna and is six months after those two vaccines or has one vaccine with Johnson & Johnson and is two months after that vaccine to please go out and get your booster shot. It requires you just to be able to identify that you are eligible and self-attest, which we believe every West Virginian can do. And this is particularly critical for our West Virginians over 50 years old, because we're starting to see some of the trending, including our reproductive value, our RT value, that is starting to go back up. And we know with the winter coming, other states that are colder than us that are already experiencing colder weather, people indoors and other countries in Europe are starting to see new surges. We cannot have that happen in West Virginia related to making sure that we maintain our hospital capacity and function. So please go get your booster. If you're in a pharmacy, we um, would reflect what FDA and CDC has said which is self-attestation that person uh, is eligible and desires a vaccine and making sure that the time, uh, the timing is correct versus the last vaccine is really what people need to do. And by our assessment, any West Virginian over 18 and particularly every West Virginian over 50 who is eligible absolutely needs to run to the fire, get vaccinated, get boosted, that protects you, protects us all, and protects our hospitals. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marsh. Next, we'll go to Secretary Bill Crouch with the DHHR. Hello, everyone. Last week and yesterday, we messaged more than 980,000 West Virginians through text messaging and phone calls uh, through Everbridge to encourage vaccines and boosters. The COVID-19 vaccine info line took hundreds of calls, actually over a thousand calls the first day uh, by making, uh, uh, providing information to folks and providing appointments, assisting individuals with appointments for, for boosters. So uh, of the 980,000, approximately two thirds of those messages were noted as delivered. Not delivered would mean unanswered or disconnected phones. Both time the messages uh, were sent uh, Two thirds, uh, I'm sorry, both times the messages were sent, traffic to vaccinate.wv.gov more than doubled. Uh, we are using this direct form of communication in addition to social media, paid TV and radio announcements, uh, programmatic advertising like Spotify and Pandora, billboards, in store uh, advertising for, at pharmacies and grocery stores and advertising in doctor's offices and hospitals to increase uh, the number of individuals, increase information there to advise individuals to please get vaccinated. So do as the governor says, uh, do as the governor asks, please get vaccinated. If you've been vaccinated, haven't had your booster, please get your boosters. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Retired Major General Jim Hoyer and Dr. Anam Jad are also joining us today and are available for questions. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Kenny Bass with WCHS and Fox 11. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, quick information for you. I've been keeping track of this for a while. With the number of COVID-related deaths we now have in West Virginia, uh, they would total the 34th largest city, town, or unincorporated area in the state, passing Point Pleasant, Sissonville, and Barbersville. Grafton would be next on the list, unfortunately, at 4,722. So that's a, a sad milestone for the state. 
Uh, reports today of record numbers of overdoses for the year, which ended in April nationwide. The DHHR, I know, is tracking that here in the state uh, with the epidemic of opioid abuse and, and overdoses of opioids, heroin and fentanyl, combining uh, pretty graphically with the pandemic. What do these numbers tell you about what the state needs to be doing? what we need to be looking out for and be careful of as we get into the colder months with the specter of opioids still hanging over us. Thank you. I think Secretary Krause, and then if you can't answer, sir, we'll go to Dr. Marsh. Yes, Governor, thank you. And thank you, thank you Kenny. Uh, we have seen uh, increases in fentanyl deaths uh, as the rest of the country has. Uh, I believe that's been a 29% increase over the previous year. Uh, our Office of Drug Control uh, Policy and, and also the Governor's um, uh, Substance Use Disorder Council is meeting. In fact, they're meeting this afternoon, uh, and they continue to work on developing programs. We met with some folks uh, just last week uh, dealing with our quick response teams. We've indicated that West Virginia is a model for quick response teams in the country. So we're pushing that very hard. Uh, we're looking at uh, everything we can do right now. Uh, we're, we're, there are some recommendations coming out uh, from the governor's council. There are also community uh, meetings uh, taking place that, that will cover, I believe, 15 or six, 16 communities in West Virginia where we set up uh, calls with the community to get input in terms of the substance use uh, uh, issue and, and also the overdose issues. So uh, we, we are continuing to push hard on that. It is an epidemic within our pandemic, and uh, we have not relaxed on that. We're very optimistic about Dr. Gupta being uh, the, the new uh, director of the Office of Drug Control Policy at the federal level. And uh, we look, with, uh, look forward to communication with him in, in terms of helping us with this battle. So thank you, Kenny. All right, thanks, Kenny. Next to Charles Young with WV News. Hi, this is Charles Young uh, with WV News. I had a couple of questions related to booster shots. Um, first of all, do we plan on continuing to notify people via Everbridge? Is that something we're going to do, uh, continue to do going forward? And then second of all, what impact on the demand for booster shots do we anticipate the federal agencies switching their guidelines to have? Do we think that there are folks out there that are waiting on the FDA and the, and the CDC to open it up to everyone, or are we still just generally confused about who is eligible? Thank you. Okay, Ch Charles, let me, let, me, let, me, let me take both parts. First of all, we're going to continue Ed Everbridge right along, and, and it was a great idea. I think maybe Mark, you know, Mark Curtis, you know, gave us the idea and everything. And, uh, and it, uh, absolutely, we're going to continue just pounding it with the Ever, Ever, Everbridge system. Uh, you know, that's one thing from the standpoint of do I believe there's people out there that have been sitting waiting on trying to figure out what the CDC is saying and if they're really not eligible and even, even with, uh, within our own pharmacies or whomever it may be, you know, we, we had, we had the same confusion, confusion. I mean, it's hard to watch DC and not be continually confused. Now I have been saying over and over and over that if you're 18 years of age, you fall into one of these categories, unless absolutely you walk in into a pharmacy wanting a booster shot and you say you're Superman, and jerk your shirt off and show your red S to the pharmacist, you qualify in every single way. You know, and, and with that, there's no need in us sitting around waiting on the CDC forevermore for you to get your booster shot. And, and, and in the meantime, you end up in the hospital taking up hospital space that really and truly where we have a a stroke victim or, or a heart attack victim or whatever, we may not have hospital space to accommodate them and everything because you have not gotten your booster shot that you want to get, that you want to get, and the only blocking is the CDC's confusion, and it's confusion. So absolutely, I say, Dr. Marsh says, 
General Hoy, your Dr. Amjad, Secretary Crouch, go get your booster shot right now. Go get that booster shot. You're, if you're six months out, your immunity level has dropped so low that you're making the biggest mistake of your life and you're sitting there worrying about what the CDC is telling you. Go get that booster shot. And you're going to see the CDC is going to come out, sure as the world, the CDC is going to come out in the next few days and they're going to say, everybody can go get their booster shot now. You can qualify. You can qualify, in my opinion, if you're breathing. You can qualify. I mean, if you've been with anybody, if you're 10 pounds overweight, if you, if you use tobacco in any way, you've had a little bit of high blood pressure, you're in an office, you're in a coal mine, whatever it may be, you qualify. Go get the booster. That's all I can say. All right, thank you, Charles. Next to Mark Curtis with Next Star Media. Uh, Governor, first of all, I want to thank you and the First Lady for again uh, hosting the uh, Christmas trees with the pictures of our troops on it. I believe this will be the fifth straight year my U.S. Army daughter will be uh, having her picture on that tree. We're very proud of her. and It's just a great way to salute those who serve this country. My question today, I'd like to direct it to Drs. Marsh and Dr. Amjad because I find this very concerning. Uh, I look today at the numbers, 26% of the new cases, the new positive cases in West Virginia in the past week were people aged 20 and under, 26%. And of course, most of those people, five and above, are now eligible for vaccinations. So my question is, where's, where's the disconnect here? What's your concern about the spread amongst young people, especially with the holidays coming in? What can we do to alleviate it? Dr. Anjad, we haven't heard from you, so let's hear from you. Oh, sure, Governor. Well, Mark, there's a simple answer for that. I, I would recommend everyone get the vaccines. And, and you're absolutely right with Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas and people getting together, those numbers can get higher. So we want people to get the vaccines. The vaccines are available for anyone five and older right now. And those numbers are slowly ticking up. Um, I write them down every day too. And um, five to 11 right now is 510. A couple of days ago is in the 300 range, but vaccines are available. We encourage everyone to get them. And um, if not, those numbers will just get high over the next couple of days. So that would be my recommendation for parents out there right now. Thanks. Do you want to add anything? I, I might. Sure. Yeah, so my, I might just say that um, in addition to what Dr. Amjad said, Mark, we know that nationally about a quarter of the new cases are in children. We know that children can catch and spread COVID-19 like adults but tend to be more likely asymptomatic, so harder to define. We also know that countries that have effectively vaccinated their older population, and this is now 50 and above I'm talking about, and effectively boosted that population, even if we see spread in younger people, which of course we don't want to see, but even if we do, immunizing fully, including boosting our over 50 year old population should reduce the stress on hospitals, hospital beds, ICU admissions and deaths. And therefore, while we want to immunize everybody, it is critically important as the governor has said, and as we've all said, the people that are eligible for boosters who are over 50, please immediately get vaccinated. And we also, as Dr. Amjad said, want to see our younger population vaccinated, not only to protect them from COVID-19, but also to try to get to that level of immunity that we can stop the transmission of the disease and eventually see COVID-19 in our rear view mirror. All right, thank you, Mark. Next, we'll go to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, I'm a little ticked off because I got the Johnson & Johnson shot to begin with, and I only got two months out of it, uh, according to the numbers. So uh, I guess I have to get boosted quicker than anybody else in, in the room. Um, the, the other question I have is more a regional question. Our coverage area includes grant, mineral, Hampshire, Hardy, and Morgan counties. And I've been watching that map week after week, and we get maybe two counties that'll get down to the orange, but it's been red all along, basically. Um, is there a regional reason for that? 
And is there a regional strategy to maybe make a dent in that uh, vaccination number that uh, still remains kind of low? Thank you. Well, I think I think we let General Hoyer uh, answer the second part. But, Paul, I got to I got to say this, Paul. Why did you get the Johnson Johnson shot? You waited too long, Paul. We had Pfizer. Then we had Moderna. And then we we're waiting on Paul and waiting on the J&J shot. You know, and I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm just teasing you, Paul. You're great. I appreciate you. General Hoyer. Yes, sir, Governor. I, uh, too, asked uh, Paul, number one, about Johnson & Johnson. And number two, Paul, when are you going to go get your booster? Uh, the governor just told you you were eligible. So, uh, Paul, I think if you look at those counties and you look at what we track on our heat maps uh, that we call that, uh, that look at infection rates and vaccination rates, uh, we still have a challenge in those areas with vaccination rates. So therefore, you're going to see uh, those numbers continue to, uh, to be in those ranges that you described. So again, as the governor and, and all of us have counseled, getting vaccinated and getting the booster doses are going to bring those, those numbers down and bring us back into the appropriate range. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Next, we'll go to Jess Mancini with Ogden Newspapers. Uh, thank you for taking my question. I guess this is probably for some medical people there, but uh, Pfizer has asked that their their pill be given an emergency use authorization. And my question is, could that pill possibly be used as a booster shot, similar to a booster shot? Jess, I appreciate your question, but that's way past my pay grade. Dr. Marsh, maybe you could go with that. So the, the new med, thank you, Governor. Um, the new medications that will come before the FDA and the CDC, one, an oral medication from Pfizer and another oral medication from Merck will be used to prevent severe illness in people at risk who test positive for COVID-19 and are within the first two to three days, preferably one day of having a positive test. And these uh, pills are effective in clinical studies. The Pfizer pill reduced symptomatic infection requiring hospitalization by 90%. The Merck pill reduced um, hospitalization by 50%. Both um, reduced deaths to zero, so, so uh, blocked people from dying. But these won't be used as boosters or you know, don't really have the uh, direct impact on the immune system. What they do is they target critical parts of the virus and, and, and disable the virus's ability to replicate and to infect us. So they work directly on the virus. These could be game changers, but won't replace the requirement, the real importance for us to have our population fully vaccinated and be able to have that active immunity as well, because the active immunity serves to also reduce even your risk of testing positive. So the oral pills are gonna be a new benefit for us but they won't serve as a booster and they won't replace vaccinations as a critical core component of our approach to COVID. All right. Thank you, Jess. Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, okay. I, uh, I really don't have anything else to report other than the fact that we, like I said, we had a whole bunch of reconciliations. We had 34 reconciliations deaths today of the 62, but still, if you take, you know, if you take that away, we still lost 28 folks and uh, it's just, it's just way, way, way too many. Uh, we had some great news today on our unemployment numbers and uh, and I, again, thank Mark Curtis. I think Mark is the one that, you know, just, uh, you know, mentioned again, you know, about, about sending out a robocall, you know, and notifying people to go get their booster shot. And, and, uh, 
And that's good stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, really, when it really boils right down to it, you know, the broadcasters have really stepped up. We listen to all. We listen to all, and we try to make those moves and make them immediately and, uh, and just try in every way to get ourselves better. Uh, now, and try to help as many and save as many lives as we possibly can. You know, the, uh, like I said, the unemployment numbers, off the chart in West Virginia. The absolute, absolutely how West Virginia's doing is terrific. Can we do better? Of course we can. Are we continuing to work to try to do better? Of course we can. You know, and, it, and of course we are. You know, uh, I would tell you that, uh, you know, the nation, the nation and, and, and facing in West Virginia the overdose crisis, you know, uh, this pandemic has probably weighed heavily on that as well. You know, and, uh, and in many ways, you know, it, uh, it takes up additional time. You know, we have absolutely got some wonderful programs in place and we're trying to help as many folks as we possibly can, but we don't want to drop our guard. We don't want to drop our guard in any way. We want to, tr to continue to try to help in every way to extinguish this terrible, terrible killer that is absolutely just taken, has, has taken over in West Virginia in many ways. We have diminished, but we've not absolutely, we've surely, st surely still got a lot of work to do. With all of that, you know, uh, we continue to move north. That's the only way that I know to go. Uh, you know, I, 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 again, I thank the media in every way for all the different stuff that they bring to the table and their questions and all that. But, uh, but let's just keep at it, West Virginia. The one thing that I keep saying over and over, and I'll end with this, the one thing that absolutely keeps us moving north is we absolutely have stayed together. That's the thing. We have not fragmented in 50 different directions. Sure, we have different ideas, but we've stayed together as West Virginians, and we've done damn good. So let's just stay at it, West Virginia. Thank you all so much.